It can be a challenge to learn English pronunciation because there are so many different sounds. Beginners and intermediate students often struggle to pronounce words correctly. And it's no wonder why. Some words are spelled the same but sound different. For example, I read the book yesterday, but I also read a book today. And others have different spellings but sound the same. For example, I write my notes and I think I'm right. Before we begin today's video, let's establish the difference between pronunciation and accent. Pronunciation is saying words so that other people can understand you. It includes the sounds we make, the stress we put on different words or syllables, and the intonation, the way our voice goes up or down. An accent refers to how a person speaks, which is often influenced by their culture or the region that they live in. It's also interesting to note that there are over 160 different types of English accents. When you work on your English pronunciation, especially in an English-speaking environment, it will help you improve your confidence to communicate in the language, but it's also going to help you overcome those language barriers. If your English pronunciation isn't good, then your level of fluency seems to be a lot lower than it actually is. Now, let me ask you something. Do you think that the only way to improve your pronunciation is to repeat words over and over again? Yes, improving your pronunciation means you need to practice, but it doesn't mean that you now need to join the army and practice drill exercises like you're in the army. Because, to be honest, this is boring, tedious, dull, monotonous, unexciting, uninteresting. How else can I describe this old-fashioned way of improving your pronunciation? Ah, soul-destroying and mind-numbing. In this video, I'm going to share with you the first step to help you improve your pronunciation so that other English speakers think your fluency level is more advanced than it actually is, the three approaches to improving pronunciation and why two of them are super boring, and the easiest and quickest way to start sounding better and to stop avoiding having a conversation because you are worried other English speakers won't understand you. Or worse, you won't understand them. If you are new here, my name is Leandra and I am an online English teacher helping intermediate students like you speak confidently in any situation. Because, let's be honest, I don't know anybody who's learning English because they think, oh, it sounds amazing or this is a fun language to learn. It is usually because you need to learn it for work or for travel or for any other reason. By the way, if you are learning this language for fun, please comment below. I would love to talk to you. There are three main methods to improving your pronunciation. And coming up later, I'm going to explain to you why you cannot pronounce what you cannot hear. These three main methods are the intuitive imitative approach, the analytical linguistic approach, and the integrative approach. These are just three very fancy words to say you can improve your pronunciation by doing the following. In the first approach, you need to listen and imitate the sounds and the rhythms of native speakers. This you can do using apps or videos or series where you can say the short word or phrase and repeat. The second approach is to use phonetic charts, the International Phonetic Alphabet, as well as knowing different aspects of pronunciation, like how to move your mouth and your tongue to focus on different sounds. 
And this is usually your drill exercises. The third approach is to focus on the rhythm, the intonation, and the syllable stress that you hear in natural speech. And we normally do this in meaningful activities like having a conversation because pronunciation is a part of communication and not a drill exercise. So do you think it's possible to improve your pronunciation without the constant repetition of the same sound? Because even though doing minimal pair exercises or drills of repetition and isolation of sounds is important, like the R sound, because when we say R, it kind of sounds like we are a pirate, like R, matey. But when we say words like water, car, we're not really pronouncing an R sound, like we're not rolling the R, like a R sound. But I believe English is a tool for communication. So I'm going to focus on the same method we teach our students at English Masters to help you improve your pronunciation. So what is the simple and effective method? And could it be as easy as listening to someone reading a book? Because we already know that going to the army and practicing drill exercises is not an exciting or motivating way to sound better in English. It's like going through the boot camp and deciding at the end, I'm going to quit because what is the point? So that means the first and the second approach we spoke about is out. Before you quit and think it's not worth it anymore, Let's look at some benefits of listening to improve your pronunciation. You can understand what is being said to you when you learn about pronunciation and intonation and the rhythms of the language and how it affects what is being said. You can easily expect to understand what other people are saying to you and the meaning of the message. The second benefit is you can be easily understood by other English speakers, even if you make any errors or mistakes. So this way, you will stop avoiding speaking in English because you will feel more confident and know you will have less problems having a conversation. The third benefit is that you will probably be able to read more words even if you haven't heard or seen the word before. I know that in a lot of Romance languages like Spanish or Portuguese, the way you write it is the way you say it. And we know that this is not the case in English. Just take these words, for example. Though, tough, thorough, rough. And by listening to improve your pronunciation, you will be able to understand the rhythms and the melody of the language, which will help you to pick up new expressions and vocabulary much easier. But like I said in the beginning of the video, English is not a phonetic language. The way words are spelt is not necessarily the way that they sound. When we write in English, we have five vowel sounds, A, E, I, O, U, and 21 consonant sounds, the rest of the alphabet. But when we speak in English, we now have 12 vowel sounds, eight diphthongs, and 24 consonant sounds. And every language chooses to deal with a limited amount of sounds out of all the possible sounds a human mouth can make. And some of these sounds are absent in every language. And this is a real problem for English students because you probably apply the sounds from your mother tongue into the English language. And in English, there aren't many reliable rules to help you improve your pronunciation because there are always exceptions to the rules. If it's been proven that the best way to improve your pronunciation is by listening and repeating, and we don't want to do boring drill exercises, so then knowing you cannot pronounce what you cannot hear is the solution. What do I mean? The more you can identify 
what an English speaker is saying and how they are expressing their emotions, the easier it is for you to say these sounds in the same way without any hard effort or the boring pronunciation drill exercise. Because your auditory discrimination, another fancy word to say the difference between the sounds that you hear, will naturally improve the more you listen. Being able to discriminate or know the differences between sounds more accurately can help you to imitate the sounds easily, which then improves your pronunciation and your perceived level of English. But we also know that pronunciation is more than just listen and repeat. It's also about retraining the muscles in your mouth and in your tongue. It's focusing on connected speech, the stress on words and syllables, as well as the rhythm of the language. And it's a little bit about understanding some rules or patterns. For example, if you have a two-syllable word and it is a noun or an adjective, you put the stress on the beginning of the word, but if it's a verb, it's usually at the end. And of course, there are exceptions. Remember that the goal of improving your pronunciation is not to sound like you come from London or New York, but rather to communicate effectively or have a conversation with another English speaker, native or non-native, and to be easily understood. So in order to do this, you are going to focus on the features that could distort or change the meaning of the message. One of my students couldn't discriminate between the sound of laugh and love. And we already know that the word laugh could be pronounced many different ways just by reading it if you've never heard the word before. During one of our conversational classes, she kept mispronouncing the word laugh. Now, if I wasn't her teacher, I wouldn't understand if we were talking about laughing, you know, something is funny, or if we were talking about something more serious or emotional because we were loving something. Let's practice the skill together of discriminating between sounds. I want you to listen to the most difficult poem to pronounce. It was written by a Dutch poet many, many years ago, um, so it's a little bit old-fashioned, some of the words, but I'm going to read to you the parts that make the most sense in modern-day English. And the poem is called The Chaos. If you want me to do a video on the entire poem, because it has over 800 irregular spelt words and pronunciations then let me know in the comments. The instructions for this exercise to help you discriminate between sounds. I want you to listen to me reading parts of the poem. While you are looking at the words and listening to me, you are going to understand why this is the most difficult to pronounce poem. And you won't recognize the words unless you also read them and listen at the same time. Make a note of the words or the sounds that confuse you the most. And then I want you to pause and practice shadowing or copying me. Are you ready? Let's go. The chaos. Dearest creature in creation, studying English pronunciation. I will teach you in my verse, sounds like corpse, corpse, horse, and worse. I will keep you Susie busy, make your head with heat grow dizzy. Tear an eye, your dress will tear, so shall I, oh hear my prayer. Just compare heart, beard, and herd, dies and diet, lord and word, sword and sword, retain and Britain. Mind the letter, how it's written. Now I surely will not plague you with such words as plague and ague. But be careful how you speak. Say break and stake, but bleak and streak. Cloven, oven, how and low. Script, receipt, 
show, poem, and toe. Now I'm going to read the last part of the poem. Are you ready? Neither leisure skein deceiver, heron, granary, canary, crevice and device and eerie, face but preface, phlegm, phlegmatic, ass, glass, base, large but target, gin, give, verging, ought, out, joust and scour, scourging, ear but earn and wear and tear, do not rhyme with here but air. Seven is right, but so is even, hyphen, ruffin, nephew, Stephen. Monkey, donkey, turk and jerk, ask, grasp, wasp and cork and work. Pronunciation, think of psyche, is a paling stout and spiky. Won't it make you lose your wits, writing groats and saying grits? It's a dark abyss or tunnel, strewn with stones, stowed solace, gunwale. Finally, which rhymes with enough? Though, through, plough, or dough, or cough? Hiccup has the sound of cup. My advice is give it up. Okay, as you can hear, and that was just the short version of the poem, that there are a lot of irregularities and being able to discriminate between the different sounds in words. If you want to use this first step to improve your pronunciation of listening and making it as simple as listening to someone read a book, then I have this playlist where you can listen and read along with me. I recommend that you complete all five chapters because there is a lot of repetition when you listen to an entire book. So good luck and I will see you in the next video.